Music producer accusing Diddy of sexual assault and harassment is also accusing actor Cuba Gooding Jr. This producer filed the original lawsuit last month, accusing Combs of forcing him to find sex workers and pressuring him into doing sexual things with them. Now, he's saying Gooding groped and fondled him while they were on Combs' yacht. No comment from Gooding's reps yet. Cuba Gooding Jr. is facing new allegations of sexual assault, this time from producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones Jr., who filed a lawsuit in February. Jones claims that Sean Diddy Combs actually harassed, drugged, and threatened him between 2022 and 2023. Initially, Gooding's name was mentioned in the lawsuit, but it was officially added as a defendant on Monday, as reported by People magazine. The Miami Herald stated that this change in the lawsuit came shortly after Homeland Security raided Combs's homes in Miami and Los Angeles. Jones alleges that Combs not only harassed and f***ed him, but also tried to introduce him to other people for sexual purposes. According to Jones, Combs introduced him to Gooding in January 2023, during a gathering on Combs' yacht in the Virgin Islands. Jones claims that Combs hinted for Gooding to get to know him better. After the introduction, Jones accuses Gooding of sexually harassing and assaulting him by touching various parts of his body against his will. Jones states that despite his discomfort and rejection, Gooding persisted until Jones physically pushed him away. In his lawsuit, Jones accuses Combs of running a sex trafficking venture and engaging in other illegal activities, such as providing spiked drinks to minors and sex workers at his homes. Jones claims that while working on Combs' album in 2023, he was subjected to constant unwanted touching by Combs. He also recalls waking up disoriented and unclothed in bed with Combs and two sex workers, suspecting that he had been drugged. According to NBC News, the raids on Combs' homes were part of an investigation into allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, and illegal drug and firearm distribution. This isn't the first time Gooding has faced accusations of sexual assault. In 2022, he pleaded guilty to forcibly touching a woman in 2018. A year later, he settled a lawsuit in which a woman accused him of raping her twice in 2013. In November of the same year, both women filed a civil suit against him. The fact that so many high-profile people seem to be going down with Diddy now is really suspicious. I mean, even Kanye said something a few years ago that people really glossed over and let me tell you right now, they really shouldn't have. Kidnap my daughter in public and I didn't have the address of my child. None of these niggas that want to say something Travis now. Travis gave you the address though? Travis gave me the address. Right. But as far as Meek Mills, no. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these niggas. All you fake hard niggas, f you. Wait, Come, wait, no, no, wait. hold on, hold on. Okay. All you fake hard niggas, f you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'll get because you can't shoot nobody anyway. And the reason why you got talks is because you did a deal, you fed. fed. You know what I'm saying? That's why you got to come at me, because part of the deal for you to be able to do all that rah, 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 and get out of jail is that you promise that you're going to go pull my coat co car. So y'all niggas shut the f up about me. Now let me say it calm. You niggas shut the f up about, <laughs> you shut the f up about Michael. Right. Sean Diddy Combs was seen at a Miami airport after Homeland Security conducted raids on two of his properties. These raids were said to be part of a federal investigation into sex trafficking. Video footage from TMZ shows Diddy walking back and forth outside a customs office at Miami Opelaka Executive Airport around 3 p.m. PT on Monday, March 25th. This sighting happened not long after the raids occurred. Shortly after federal agents raided his properties in Los Angeles and Miami, Diddy was spotted by TMZ pacing outside of Miami Opelaka Executive Airport on Monday afternoon, March 26th. According to their sources, Puffy was outside a customs office and was waiting to be joined by other people who were apparently also being questioned by federal officials. Information is still murky, but TMZ claims Diddy boarded a separate private jet when Homeland Security arrived, but he is not thought to be currently under arrest or on the run. Reports suggest that Diddy and his entourage were stopped at Miami International Airport, potentially while boarding a private jet, when Homeland Security intervened. There have also been some very interesting arrests made. Amazon delivered, a woman visited, a private guard guarded. A more typical day at Sean Diddy Combs Star Island Properties. Done for the moment, the federal agents who served one of two search warrants here, part of a criminal investigation by the Southern District of New York. 
agents took electronics, including a silver MacBook Air. The raid simultaneously at his homes on Star Island and in LA, as Combs himself was preparing to fly out of Opalaka Airport, but not on his private plane, which had already departed for Antigua. It was at Opalaka that one of his entourage, Brendan Paul, was arrested for having pain in his bags. Paul is also named as a mule and payer of workers in this scathing, explicit 73-page lawsuit against Combs, his son, and a roster of associates by music producer Rodney Jones. Last month in it, Jones unspooled allegations with photos of trafficking, drugs, violence, threats, a quote, enterprise, establishing one of the locations for it as Combs' Star Island address. On the same day, reports emerged of Homeland Security and local law enforcement conducting raids on Diddy's homes in Los Angeles and Miami. Video footage from a local news station showed armed law enforcement officers at his Beverly Hills residence. It's unclear if Diddy was present during the raids. Homeland Security, in a statement to Us Weekly, said that these actions were part of an ongoing investigation with support from various law enforcement agencies. These raids come after Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Cassie, real name Cassandra Ventura, accused him of and abuse in a lawsuit. They reached a settlement shortly after the lawsuit gained media attention. Cassie's lawyer has commented on the raids, expressing support for law enforcement in seeking justice for any wrongdoing. These developments indicate a significant legal challenge ahead for Diddy, suggesting potential consequences for alleged past actions. Additionally, comedian Cat Williams had previously hinted at such issues. All of these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. And now, the hammer seems to be coming down on Diddy. And we're talking about the Southern District of New York possibly initiating this search warrant. Where does your mind go in terms of what we might be looking at in terms of hot potential charges, potential allegations, uh, and how it's connected to New York? So I absolutely believe, and again, simply my hypothesis, he is innocent until proven guilty that he will be um, arrested and well, indicted on trafficking charges. I have no doubt um, about that. And I do believe that he was most likely the kingpin um, of this. These girls, what that tells me, if it's out of the Southern District of New York, is this is spanning multiple states um, and that he is trafficking or allegedly trafficking girls um, across multiple states, across the United States. This isn't just an isolated incident um, in one location. And so I have heard um, things as well about his Hamptons parties and things happening in those Hamptons parties as well. So I suspect um, more evidence may come out as a result of that. But these are extremely serious uh, charges. And part of me, too, is frustrated um, by somewhat the complacency, right, of the entertainment industry as a whole. Um, in this. Uh, and I think sometimes people fly under the radar for a long time, like Epstein did as well, um, because people are scared. Uh, people want to still climb the ranks. And we're doing it all the while sort of sacrificing the safety of these, these young victims or girls that are involved in this. And that is deeply troubling. Before we get into more of this, I, I, I hear you, and, and I, I think, you know, it's really, really frightening to think about. I mean, I read all these allegations and the lawsuits, and I was, I've was i never heard anything like it. Um, and obviously, we don't know exactly where this investigation's going. But if Combs is charged with federal crimes here, but he's not in the country, and he's actually in a country uh, or a jurisdiction where there's no extradition agreement, how do you get him back? How, what do federal authorities do? That's a really good question. And I looked up just because I was curious actually about Antigua. Yeah. I don't know all of them off the top of my head. Some I do, some I don't. Um, but we do have an extradition treaty with them. Um, right now though, because of the public nature of this, I have a very hard time believing that a country would allow his plane to land with him on it in their country. They don't have to let him land. You know, I mentioned some of the interviews they wouldn't have had enough to just to try to arrest him first and then do the raid 
or they need the raid first to see what's at the property before they can build a case and build charges and then arrest them. Talk to me about the timeline of how this typically works in terms of if we're seeing uh, a raid on several properties. Does that in conjunction with an arrest? Does that come before an arrest? Uh, does that, uh, you know, how does it typically work? Typically, Jesse, it's in conjunction with an arrest. But I started thinking about this a little bit more last night, and I was, was thinking that if he has videos and or his associates have videos and they are attempting to distribute those of young male children or female children, that means that a child is in imminent danger. Mm. And so part of me wonders if this was done to stop that um, and that they will get to the arrest obviously at some point um because you know as you mentioned typically these these warrants are served and there's usually an indictment that goes you know hands in hand with that at the same time so in my opinion it's not unheard of it's just a little bit unusual we don't typically right. see this anytime we did raids um at the fbi of, of this nature we ha also had an arrest warrant uh for the individual as well and so it is unusual, but I don't want to say it's unheard of. And again, I'm just speculating, but part of me wonders if this was still actively being distributed. Um, and if it is, they need to shut that down immediately. Um, were you surprised at the response that we saw from Douglas Wigdor? This is a lawyer for Cassie Ventura and one of the Jane Doe's in response to reports of this search warrant that was issued on Sean Combs. The last controversy Diddy had been a part of was the Lil Rod case, and that was only just last month. Now the Lil Rod case becomes even more compelling when you consider Diddy had a very interesting relationship with Fonsworth Bentley. Let me let me let me ask you this. What what do you think Diddy and Fonsworth Bentley's real relationship was? Concubine. Master Period. Everybody know Bentley. Everybody know. I think the thing that everybody is having a hard time grasping is how that whole thing could have probably went down. But the thing is, is it was how fast he disappeared. Yes. Now he lives in Atlanta. He's married. He has two sons. He's living, yeah. he's living his life. I mean, but how many? You, listen, y'all, if you've ever lived in Atlanta, you know the majority, uh, the ma okay, the majority yeah. of them are bisexual and gay men. Yes. They just and down low. To be married and gave their life to God and then your pastor. And down low culture is still very, very, very heavy in the black community um, in Atlanta. It's funny because Atlanta's like a gay mecca. You would think that there would be no need for download culture, but download culture is thriving in Atlanta still. And it's weird because you can find whatever you want in Atlanta, any kind of relationship, poly, the yeah. Forties, whatever yeah. you're into, you can find somebody there that's into it. Yeah. It ain't it really, you may meet somebody and a, a lady's like, yeah, these are my two husbands. Yeah. And we gonna play Star Wars. <laughs> 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 so you think you think he was Diddy's concubine? Absolutely. He was too complicit and he was too compliant. And he just disappeared. He disappeared faster than Mace did. Mace went when in. Mace ran from Diddy, you could see the trailer just fire from his footsteps <laughs> as he ran. That is to true. The um but I, I just, I don't understand why people don't ask why. People, oh yeah, yeah, he gone. Oh, okay. Nobody bothered to ask why. Jaguar Wright, in general, has always been on Diddy's case. My focus right now is Sean Combs. Okay, tell us why, tell us why. Because he's a sex trafficker. And okay. he's using music and entertainment sex traffic. Now, is this, is this just boys, girls, adults, kids? Like, I mean, from what I've heard from sources that I would consider reliable, it really doesn't matter. Wow. Um, I don't think sexuality is something that has anything to do with gender at this point for Sean. I, I, I honestly think he's just an extreme narcissist who loves power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. 
Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor who loved to control people. And his mentor was? Andre Lavelle. Tell, tell us how he was, was mentored by Clyde Davis. Oh, oh God. And don't tell me that Andre Harrell got touched by Clive Davis too. I'm telling you, I don't know what happened between Andre and, and and Clive. What I do know is that Andre got passed over. Like, wow. how do you go from being the president of Uptown and losing your entire company to your intern? Like Puff started out as an intern. Yes, he was he on parties with Mark Barnes in Washington, D.C. And then he became an intern at Uptown. And he was very, you know, proactive. And, 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 and he, if there's one thing that Sean knows, he knows pop culture. That is true. He knows what's hot. Like, I, cannot, what I cannot take anything away from where he has been extremely effective. Yes. He knows pop culture. Matter of fact, he probably knows pop culture better than he knows music. Mm. I never felt like he had a lot of talent in music. Is that fair for me to say? I mean, nobody really cares about him rapping. Right. Sean Diddy Combs has strongly denied allegations of at his Manhattan recording studio in 2003. The woman who made the accusations, now in her 30s, has officially disputed the claims made by the 54-year-old music mogul, who is from Harlem. Until about six months ago, Gene Deal had been vocal about the matter. How do you feel about this new lawsuit? It's a girl that was 17 at the time accusing Harv Pierre of forcing her to give him fellatio. And she also claims that Diddy, he flew her to New York and he gang raped his recording studio called Daddy House. Well, I think that any man that forced any woman to do anything, it should be like the Arab countries. They just start cutting shit off to be totally honest, of that man. Any man that forces any woman to do anything, they should treat them like they treat them in the Arab countries and just start cutting shit off. From their fingers, to their hands, to their feet, to their genitals, to their head. You know what I'm saying? So now, another thing of it is, is that how low do you have to be when you gonna put somebody on a jet and fly them all the way to New York to the studio. To me, bro, to be totally honest, it sound kind of fishy to me. I, 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 I can't, but, and then it came from Hard Pierre. The Hard Pierre I knew back in there, back in them days, was a cornball that did everything Puff said. You know what I mean? Like he was, he was, he was one of Diddy highest dick riders. So I don't know that hard, Pierre. The time they said it happened when I was reading in 2003, I was around at that time. You know what I'm saying? Me and about eight, nine other bodyguards. See, what people don't know, that Puff had a lot of bodyguards. Everybody had certain days. You understand? I had Saturdays and Sundays. And then when Puff went away or they were certain place and I was off work, they may call me and say, yo, Gene, Puff wants you here. Can you come, this, that, and the third? And if I could, I would. If I did, I, I didn't. It, it wasn't no big thing. So for them to do that, man, that's some real thirsty, desperate shit. That's some real thirsty, desperate shit for them to fly a 17-year-old girl, you know, on a G5. They were flying G5 and G4 jets back then. All the way to New York to get paper in the studio, man. I wish I could, I wish I, I wish I could uh, give them the, give them their punishment. If that's true. Yeah, that's what she said, man. She said that Diddy, he flew her to New York, took her to the studio, gave her drugs and game. And there's pictures online too. So she was at his studio, daddy house, so. I mean, she ain't lying about that. She was there, man. Well, if anything, if, at that time, if anything came from Detroit, it was one of Puff A&R, they called him Slam. He was from Detroit. He used to set up everything, you know, for Diddy. The time I told y'all about 
Diddy getting a fellatio when Jennifer Lopez was upstairs. So Slam set that up. You know what I mean? So if it came from Detroit, <laughs> it probably came from Slam. Because he was another one of the dudes that was a flunky around there. When asked if this was typical with Diddy, Gene had a rather curious answer. I really don't, I, I, I got daughters, man. I have, I have words, I, I don't have words for that, bro. And, and, and I don't know any of the guys who were officers that worked for bad boy like myself would allow that shit to happen. They wouldn't allow that shit to go down. Pup and them, they know what to do when certain people are around. You understand? When they got those dudes who was, you know, from the hood and they was doing bodyguard work and, and they was doing stuff like that, they made, but I don't know any of the officers that I knew that was working for Puff would allow any of that shit to go down. Cause they know they could lose their job and they could be brought up on charges too. You know, people ain't dumb, people ain't stupid, and there ain't that much money in that hip hop world to lose your job behind some dumb shit like that. That shit was crazy, bro, to do that to that little girl. But she's gotta prove it. And she has to prove it by saying this. She has to tell, she cannot come out and say that this happened to her 20 years ago and she never told nobody else. Or she never tried to do something, you know, about it. She had to tell somebody 20 years ago, yo, when I was there, they did this to me. She had to write it in a diary or something like that, you know, and she has to prove to the court that this actually happened to her. Right. Are you familiar with Daddy House? Am I familiar with it? Am I familiar with it? Yeah, 44th between uh, Broad, was it 8th? 7th and 8th? Oh uh, yeah, between, I think 8th. 8th is going, that way it's going down to, between 7th and 8th. Yeah, I'm familiar with Daddy House. Yep. Was he known for having relations with females at his studio? Did you know about it? It never happened on my, I, I never seen him work, I never seen him mess with anybody on my watch at Daddy House. It was always business. When I went to Daddy House with Puff, it was always business. According to the lawsuit, the individual making the accusations alleges that she was flown to Sean Diddy Combs' New York studio by the accused. Upon arrival, she asserts that she was provided with alcohol and drugs by Combs, his longtime friend and rapper Harve Pierre, and another unnamed individual. Subsequently, she claims to have experienced violent acts that inflicted significant distress and confusion upon her. And it was crazy how the internet picked up the story and dug up even more dirt. Now listen, Diddy, well actually Harvey is who she met, not at first, not Diddy. Now Harvey couldn't help that she happened to be in a club at 17. Okay, I'll give you that. However, however, how are you excusing him handing her off to Diddy when Harvey and Diddy, of course, already had this planned out on what they was gonna do to this girl and in no way, shape or form was there any kind of consent given? Why are you not looking at the fact that she said he forced her, which means she didn't want to do it. I don't give a damn if she was 13 and looked at 25 in a club. She didn't want to do it. Oh my God. Is these y'all aunties that made you uh, uh, put on sweats when your child molest uncle came over instead of kicking and kicking off foot in your child molest uncle? This the one that told you you shouldn't have been wearing a short skirt. Love Jones said, I met Harvey when I was super young. You better tell that story on your channel and get them views. Why, why do people always deflect? We holding Diddy accountable right now. We'll talk about the girl's poor decision making later. Additionally, Gene Deal has stated that there would be additional cases in the near future. Tiffany, right? Cassie friend Tiffany, did you see her interview? Yeah, I seen the interview. Yeah, she said a lot in that interview, man. What you think about her saying that, you know, Diddy, he will only do music with Cassie when she would do freak off sessions with him. Yo, that was crazy. And she said that 
it was heartbreaking to her that her music was the reason why they was freaking off. The music that she was writing, it was for Cassie to freak off with him. And she couldn't believe it. I didn't, I, and then she said that uh, in the interview, which was crazy, she said that Puff came to the house and tried to make the girl have sex with him. And she intervened and said, she don't have to have sex with you. And he said, she said, then I seen his monster. Like, I was like, he had a monster? She was like, yo. She said, I seen his monster. He just, his whole tone, his facial expression, everything just changed towards her. I was like, yo, that's crazy. She lucky. And you believe everything she's saying. You being around Diddy, you believe all this. You know, him giving her a black eye, you know, him not doing music with her unless she did a freak off session with him. You believe all this. Bruh, I'm, 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 be, I'm being totally honest, man. Like, I, I believe that when, when you on those type of drugs and shit like that with alcohol, that it caused those people to think like that. It, it's crazy, you know, for these women to be in fear of their life based on you trying to put that pressure on them like that. We started it off that doing his turmoil at the city college, he slapped his mother. If anybody put their hands on their mother, they are capable of doing anything. Do you understand that, bro? He's capable of doing anything to a female. I don't believe Cassie lied. I don't believe Tiffany Red lied. Dude, whole life has changed, bro. You know, the money, the, the alcohol, all the things made him to a different person. The stuff that he learned, the stuff that he was doing. These girls is not lying about what they witnessed. The women who told me, you know, how he treated them, what, they, what he did to them. The girl Gina, who we heard all say, he kicked her, he pushed her, mushed her in her face, all that. These women is not lying about seeing a These limbs, women are not lying about being a it's, it's It's his behavior. It wasn't corrected way back when. Had he got help with, with that sh way back when? Then maybe. They wouldn't have a leg to stand on. It's a lot of women coming out, bruh. It's a lot of people coming out. I, they got three cases already filed in court already, I think. Oh, wow. I didn't know about that. So they got three cases that's on the way. They got three cases on the way. Yo, I believe what those girls are saying. It's, it's too many women that's coming out and they saying the same thing. And they wasn't around each other. Gina said what she had to say. Cassie said what she had to say. Tiffany Red said what she saw. These other people that didn't file cases, which is similar. It's gonna be crazy, bro. What case could possibly be next? Let me know in the comments.